Hello everyone, this is Doug Southworth from Indiana University in conjunction with the EPIC project and ESNet. In this short video, we're going to look at how to choose components to build a budget-friendly 10 gig DTN using the Dell website server configurator as an example. The first option on the Dell configurator is the chassis selection. We're going to go ahead and take the 3.5 inch option because there's a greater selection of budget friendly 3.5 inch hard drives out there. We do not want software RAID though, so we're going to take the non-software RAID option. The next choice we have is processor. We're going to look for something that has at least 3 GHz per core clock speed in order to keep up with high speed TCP streams. Remembering that each TCP stream is going to occupy one processor core, if we want to do multiple parallel streams, we also need something with multiple cores. Choosing something like a Xeon processor, a server grade processor, is also desirable because it has a higher cache. So we're going to take this 6 core unit here that has a 3.4 gig per core clock speed. That meets all of our specs. The next thing we need to configure is RAM. Now, when configuring RAM, it's important to know how many DIMM slots the server has since we want to occupy each DIMM slot with the same size RAM module in order to increase memory bandwidth available to the processor. So in this case, we have four DIMM slots and we're going to target 32 gigs, so that means we're going to take the smaller RAM modules and put four of those in, as opposed to, say, putting in two 16 gig DIMMs and not occupying all the slots. Next, we're going to choose our RAID configuration and RAID controller. We're going to go ahead and pick the RAID 10 option here as it gives us the fault tolerance of RAID 1, but also gives us the speed advantage of RAID 0. The other thing we need to pick is a RAID controller. We're going to go ahead and opt for the H730 here as it has a 2 gig onboard cache as opposed to the H330 that doesn't have any cache at all and during intense transfers that will help keep the disk subsystem from getting bogged down. Next we need to configure storage. Since this is a budget friendly build, we're going to choose SATA drives instead of the more expensive SAS or SSD options. And since we earlier picked a RAID 10 configuration, we need to have at least four identical hard drives. We're going to use these 4 terabyte units that will give us 8 terabytes total of usable space once they're in the RAID 10 configuration. Storage is one of the most easily upgradable things after the fact, so down the road if you decide that you need more storage or you need faster hard drives, those are certainly options you can upgrade later. Remote management of your DTN is likely to be important, so make sure to include some sort of remote access card like the iDRAC9 Basic selected here. If you need more advanced features later on, upgrading to the iDRAC9 Enterprise is as simple as purchasing a software license. Next we need to choose network interfaces. This particular server has two 1 gigabit interfaces directly on the motherboard, but since we're building a 10 gig capable DTN, we need a 10 gig capable network interface as well. I'm going to pick this Intel X710 dual port unit because I know that this card is well supported across multiple operating systems. I pick the low profile option to reserve the full height slot for future expansion. Your choice of optic will depend upon your current network environment and hardware, and this decision will likely have to be coordinated with a member of your network team. Since your DTN is an always-on, always-available resource, be sure to choose redundant power supplies if they are available. More information about building a high-performance DTN is available at ESNet's Faster Data site, or you can visit us online at epic.global. Links are provided in the description below.